So my topic is about uh, file system maintain maintenance. Um, currently, the model that we have, we're all familiar with. We love it, uh, which is all the different file systems maintain our own trees and all that stuff, and then we send our, our things to Linus directly. Um, if we want to make VFS changes, obviously we send them to Christian or Vero, depending on what area it's in. Um, this works pretty, this works well, right? Like the actively maintained file systems know what they're doing, they run their testing, they do everything. This, this works really great. Um, but especially as we've moved into doing a lot more work amongst ourselves, like that touches everybody, folios, mount API, you know, namespace things continue to change the landscape. Uh, it's become a thing where we're having to work across different file systems more and more often. Um, and additionally, you know, we all show up to this thing every year and we all like make plans and then like we wander off and half of those plans get done. Half of that is just, you know, we have other priorities, things come up, but it feels like a part of the problem is, is like nobody feels empowered to kind of like make those decisions and make ends and uh, push that work through. Um, additionally, there's like a little bit of, of vagueness about who owns what. Um, a good example of this is like merging new file systems. Um, that tends to be like, sometimes it's fine and sometimes it's kind of like this painful, contentious thing where like everybody has an opinion um, and it's ultimately up to Linux. Uh, I don't, th that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does create a, light, a lot of uncertainty for people that are posting new file systems. It's sort of like, um, Oft, I've noticed sometimes that people who have a lot of experience in this field um, often have their their uh, concerns like waved away because Linus just says "fuck it, I'll merge it anyway." Um, I think that that is a strength of Linus. Like I think that's a strength of our community because sometimes like Linus, like somebody needs to make the decision, and that ends up being Linus. Um, I, but. I don't like the, all the uncertainty that comes with that setup, that you just have to like sway Linus to ignore people or whatever. Um, so to that end, one thing that I've been talking about for a, a little while now, a year almost, is trying to shift us to a little bit more of a model that you see like in other subsystems, for example, like networking or um, well, networking, <laughs> device drivers, uh, sorry, graphics. Graphics is another good example, right? Where you have you know, a lot of things that are kind of separate or disparate, but all funnel in through the same maintainer, right? Um, uh, I feel like this would remove some of the pain points in doing things that touch all of us. Like when we make API, is when we have to do big sweeping changes. It is oftentimes a pain in the ass to go figure out where, whose Git tree you have to pay attention to. And I'm not saying that this is like, ButterFS is probably the worst about this, right? Because we kind of do things a little bit differently from everybody else. Our shit is in GitHub. We have all of these different things that we do. So it's a little bit annoying. We do ship to Linux next and all that stuff. So it's not like we're that strange, but kind of like I, you know, in talking with Christoph, especially, who's done work in ButterFS recently, we are different enough that it's irritating enough for him to, like, not want to have to deal with it, right? And that's not great. Um, and, you know, and I do a lot of work outside of the file system space, and I run into the same thing. So that is sort of just how it goes for this. But I feel like the file system community specifically is a lot more painful than it should be, especially given how much code that we share, folios, VFS, right? Um, so one of the proposals that I had was creating a sort of like, uh, uh, basically a, a tree that is maintained that all of the file systems push into um, and instead of going directly to Linus, we go directly to this tree. And like that's more of a mechanical thing 
more of like a cultural shift that I want with that. Vero, yeah. Uh, you do realize that uh, there are places outside of well-known places where you can Uh, quite a few of the file systems had been well outside of OFS. Some had been in um, security, uh, a couple in Arch. Right. Uh, do you really want to have uh, uh, special, very specialized uh, file systems in S390 and PowerPC uh, going through uh, the same unified tree as, uh, say, XT4 and Butterfuss? I don't think so. I, I think that, like, again, this is more like a cultural shift and less of a mechanical one, right? I, I think that the, for those specialized file systems that exist outside of everything, that aren't touched, that aren't messed with, like, I'm not worried about those, right? I'm more worried about things like folio conversions, Mount API, IO map, all of these things where we touch. Mount API uh, definitely touches them. Same for, say, uh, USB gadget uh, file systems. All the scrap, uh, getting, getting them on the permanent basis uh, uh, through uh, unified file system tree is, I think, hopeless. And s uh, the stuff you've mentioned just now, Mount API conversions, but it definitely touches to them. Right. So I like I okay, that's a good point. Um then well that just shoots everything in the face. I don't know. Um <laughs> I uh, so honestly I think more what I'm trying to get at is I want to make it easier for all of us for people that do cross file system work to get their patches merged without having to understand how each individual file system community works? Uh, I don't know. Uh, what's the problem with a uh, shared invariant branch agreed upon and pulled into uh, every tree, in every tree that uh, deals with that work? Yeah, I, so I don't think there's, there's not a problem with that for you, right? Because if you show up with a branch, like we're all going to pay attention, right? And if somebody involved in uh, uh, folio work, uh, after some discussion with uh, other folks involved in, in that, comes up with, okay, hey, we agreed on that branch, we all want it, uh, let's avoid conflicts, let's uh, keep it in... Uh, one of the trees doesn't matter which one. VFS slash VFS dot git, whatever. Uh, so everyone put pull and everyone agreed not to replace it. That, so that's what I'm pay attention to that. that. So that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? Is like we always have to negotiate whose tree that is, what branch, and all that stuff. I want it to be clear that it's like, okay, every time we do this, there is one tree and one, like, there is a source of truth when we're going to do this, that when we all agree, that we already know that it goes into this tree. Does it matter? I think it does. So just just to plug in, I have an actual example where that's just happened um, where this is actually an issue. Um, so some IOMAP code went into uh, Christian's tree, um, and we've just you know 
because it's in some VFS tree somewhere, it's changing stuff to do with rights and eye size and so on, and a regression has just been discovered, a data corruption regression in XFS as a result of those changes that are in the IOMAP tree. And it's because somebody was testing Linux Next rather than the XFS tree. And that's the only way it was discovered, because those IOMAP changes aren't in the XFS tree, whereas before it moved up to Chris, uh, Christian, they were going through the same tree, um, and so it was just another branch that merged out the same tree for XFS testing. And so, you know, and so now we've actually, in, you know, if we don't mechanically go and pull in the VFS tree with the IOMAP changes in it, um, we don't actually are testing the IOMAP infrastructure changes that are proposed for the next thing. Um, or the next release. And so now we're at the point where in the merge window it's probably already gone up to, to, to Linus um, and that bug is already in the upstream tree because it's only, I think, Thursday or Friday that yeah. this was discovered. So we, the changes that we've made recently to try and centralise some of the infrastructure up into VFS trees is actually backfiring on us because we haven't done the next step of being able to share them easily down, back down to the individual file systems where we actually care about those changes and making sure that there's no new data corruptions or anything of the sort like that because of those changes. So. Realistically, what I'd like to see that we have is, uh, you know, and this is, you know, Neil's saying, FS Next, you know, and that's a combination of all of the trees, you know, the VFS, the ButterFS, the XFS, the EXT4, and so on. So everybody has a common test base that they're running their, their regression testing on. Um, and so we catch these things early. <laughs> Yeah, so well, I think Linux Next no. is too unreliable to actually yes. use as a, as a development and testing base. Because we're not getting device failures and, uh, you know, all sorts of driver problems and so on. And they're the things that we have happen regularly. Somebody changes something, a block device or a driver, and file systems and things just don't mount. Um, so, historically speaking, uh, Linux Next is just not reliable enough to do, you know, performance regression testing. It's just not reliable enough to do day-to-day -day development, um, and you can't do, can't really do bisecting or anything like that reliably because if you're a day out of out of uh, date, um, all the commits are invalid anyway. Yeah. So. So I, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily think uh, everything needs to go uh, through a single tree and then needs to go up to Linux uh, for merging. I think that's, uh, I think that's infeasible, and I think there's uh, technical, there's probably technical reasons. There's also a social reasons because I think a lot of the people here in this room enjoy that they get to send pull requests to Linux as but well. Yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm gonna come back to your point now. <laughs> So, so before we venture down this road and have a big blowout and pissing match uh, on whose tree is the one uh, true tree, the better solution would be an FS next tree. Yeah, but that somebody needs to maintain an FS next tree. Right. I, that's yeah. that's the thing. Is I think that. Sorry, Ted. Do you want to say what you want yeah, to say? Yeah, I was going to say. Um, Linux Next is not terrible, but in practice, what I do is I wait until about RC6 or RC7 before I do a test merge of the ext 4 dev branch into RC6 or RC7, because usually the terrible problems, somebody else has like taken the arrows first, yeah. right? And so what the, the net result of that is I don't actually do that late breaking, that integration testing until fairly late in the game. And if it that's if that is like right before LSFMM, it just doesn't happen, right? right. And and that is the downside with that particular approach. Uh, I think whatever we do, whether it's Linux next or FS next, the key is the, it is the file system development community. You know, each individual file system community needs to do testing 
and they need to do it on more than just their local file system branch, yeah, but it right? Needs Whether it's Linux Next or FS Next, we actually do need to make a change in terms of what do we actually test. It needs to be, the main thing is that it needs to be centralized. Like this is a massive, this is a massive issue for me, for example. Like if we do infrastructure changes or I pick up infrastructure changes, it basically means I have my test matrix that I do but I have zero idea what the XFS test matrix is, and it's probably a bit larger uh, than what's going on. So there is no way, we have no centralized testing. We don't actually know if what we're doing is not breaking anyone because I, I can't push anywhere and then that push fires off a bunch of yeah, tests. For silos. So yeah. What, what we need to do is go from being seven separate silos to all testing the same code. Well, so, Matt and I have talked about this before in our, in our regular meetings about like, Every one of us the different file systems, well, I say us, I'm not in part of this, but all the rest of you who have different file systems, you know, you have your own variant of test apparatuses, you have your own variant of reporting mechanisms, you have your own coverage mechanisms, but there's no reason that those all couldn't run also on something that has all the things that you guys are all pushing to, and then that makes it easier for people like Christian or whatever to be, or even me who wants to make a patch that is supposed to work across all the things, to be able to reasonably say, I have some confidence that I didn't just fucking break everything. Yeah. So I, I, th I think we could actually solve some of this by talking to Stephen Rothwell. I, I think it would not be an unreasonable request for his workflow to merge all of the FS trees and the VFS tree into one branch. Yeah, but ev even before we, we consider it uh, a common branch, we need common test infrastructure. The thing that I've been really hoping to get going, I, I've been hoping to not have to be the person to do it. But <laughs> maybe I will. Uh, just get a freaking rack uh, or a couple racks of hardware that's dedicated to all file system testing that test that jumps up that t automatically tests branches as we push to it, and runs all this all the tests. <laughs> And a, a common way for us to check in tests and all run each other's tests. So, well, we also need post merge testing for everybody. Right. Yeah. Well, like this. Pre post merge testing. Uh, and and a, just a simple dashboard. Uh, the, the current email based workflow is not ideal because I don't know what tests have run. We ran into this with uh, Mary Allocation Profiling. Uh, we thought we were getting uh, zero day testing for build testing, which we needed for uh, all, to cover all the arcs, but it turns out that I think zero day was just backed up on all the branches that they have to test, and we didn't get the fallout until after it hit Andrew's tree. And we didn't know because we don't have a dashboard. Yeah, I, if we want to talk about like, part of this it, for me is to get to this point where we have like an FS next. Now if it's, if we just, is what needs to be tested, that's fine. But you know, ButterFS has all of this automated testing infrastructure that we, you know, you just push a branch and it runs all of the testing, right? Yeah. And like, if we if we want to do Linux Next, fine. I will switch it so when Linux Next pulls, I'll run one ButterFS because I'm not going to run all ButterFS, yeah. <laughs> and I'll do XFS and BcacheFS. I'll run all the FS testing. The thing here is though. With FS tests, there is like a known thing of like what fails and what doesn't. For ButterFS, the way we do this is we have exclude files. We do all these things to make sure you're getting a clean run every single time. And when we disable things, we make a note of why and all that stuff. And so it makes it easier for developers to say like this or that. But that's a lot of a lot of fucking work, right? Yeah. So from from that perspective, I don't think that we should be changing how we're testing our own individual subsystems. So as a ButterFS developer, you don't need to test XFS. As a VKFS developer, you don't need to test XFS. Uh, now, in, in, just hear me out. Um, as an XFS developer, I'm not actually testing ButterFS. But what I want to see is that we're all testing the same tree because of the integration problems that we've been having. We're doing more cross-file system work, more VFS work, and so on. You know, we all need to be having our latest code in the one tree, and we're all testing the same, essentially, integration tree. Okay. Um, so you do all the ButterFS testing like you're doing, but you're testing the same tree that we're doing all the same XFS testing on. And 
you, that's the same tree that you're testing BKHFS on. And in that way, you know, we do actually end up getting the overall test that we want. But we don't immediately have to worry about having some gigantic, enormous integrated <coughs> test thing that does everything for everyone. That's a, a separate problem. Something could be done separately further down the track if we just get everybody onto a shared integrated test tree will cover most of that stuff by the, the testing and the development that we currently already do. Fair, okay. okay, but we need, basically, I, we need a way to go somewhere and click on something and see it, it worked for everything that is relevant. Well, no, 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 that does... Yeah, well, like, hell yeah. I'll yeah, <laughs> so essentially the idea would be that you would, in, so normally, like, I'll, I'll, I'll pick on Butterfest because I work with Joseph a bunch. He will fork Linux Next or whatever into a branch and start doing weird dev things in his own branch on his own tree, then put it into KDave's branch, which KDave's repo, which is canonical for some definition of canonical, to then then it runs a test on that because it gets that's what the GitHub Actions is pointed to, and then it gets pushed to Linux Next where everything breaks again and we repeat this. What changes in this workflow is that everyone starts from the integration FS Next repo, you pull back, you do your own things, but then you target back into that descendant there and everyone else does that. The apparatuses that you all use would also run against that. And yes, the initial step afterwards would be to have maybe some kind of dashboard that collects the results from all of your different apparatuses. And then further down, we can talk about harmonizing the infrastructure, taking baby steps towards an idea where we're all being able to synchronize on a point where we can at least understand where we're working from and working towards, makes cross-file system development or even just following it like I have to do a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, no, I agree. Because, you know, right now, ButterFS is just, we just rebase on whatever Lenis Master is like once a week or whatever. So if it's uh, in development, we don't one get thing. it. Uh, Thankfully, uh, so anybody who uh, it's uh, merge nodes are getting ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good thing because uh, uh, if people start uh, growing dependencies upon a, what's currently in the brain. Goes any chance of reordering things in any of our branches. But why would you do that? Why would I reorder branch? Yeah, why would you reorder branches after they're merged? That's how, uh, that's how you get a uh, serious so we just treat our four next trees exactly the same way we always have. The yeah. only difference is, is that when we're doing our development and testing, we're not testing our four next tree, like the XS4 next tree or the XD4 for us, but you're testing the FS next tree. Okay. okay. So all that we're changing is the test target, not the rest of our workflows. Right. We're not, we're not, we're not changing how we're doing our own individual testing. We're only changing the test target. Um, okay. So, I mean, that's, that's the first... We can test our own dev branch, too. It's just yeah. that the next branch is published every day. Yeah. We will all also all be able test to test that. Yeah. 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 And, and, and so, I mean, that's the yeah. first step that we need to take. Everything else then follows on from that once we've got yeah. those processes in, in, in place. Um, so I, I, I think that we've got, as you said, we've got to take small steps. Yeah. Um, and the first step is getting the, you know, that integration tree that we can all test. Okay. One of the thing that concerns me is I've, I've heard you guys mention uh, post post merge breakage. Uh, why are we seeing things not break uh, in our individual dev branches, but then we do merge and something breaks? Do we have examples of that? Right. So for the people on the call, Chinner just explained that our branches are based on something else. And there it goes. And can one thing, that can, can we get a common base where the IOMAP changes, folio changes go in the base so that everyone can base their file system tree on that? 
uh, if you can get uh, everyone agree on what's going to be in invariant branch. Because, uh, look, uh, in my experience, uh, and that included uh, interaction with uh, per architecture stuff, uh, the only sane way is to, uh, when you decide that some uh, subset is fixed and uh, you are not going to uh, redo it without major disaster, uh, uh, then you carefully put that into fixed branch and then tell it that's, that's the base. You, you can't... Uh, but, but we, we end up with merge failures at Linus time because he's made a change to a bunch of folio functions and I, I don't see it because it's in the MM tree somewhere and then some of my patches reject because it, 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 it breaks on his stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's what Linux Next was for. So, but I can't give Linux something based on Linux Next. So, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, just real quick, um, Matthew touched on this earlier. Stephen Rothwell like does Linux next, right? So it, one thing that could be done, I mean, everybody has a designated branch that Stephen pulls from. If you could factor out a, a, a separate like FS next point that each disparate file system and, and like Matthew's MM stuff, if there's specific is if there's specific things that need to be serving as the basis for all the disparate file system trees to actually be based upon, and then you all are developing against that, that then becomes an intermediate point that Stephen would pull into Linux next. I, I think we might be a little bit too strict on the rule that patches go through the proper subsystem branches. And I think we may need, might need to be taking more care to avoid Interdependence, interdependencies between branches. Like most patches in a given branch are not going to have any dependencies across branches. But if there are, maybe we should make sure that those go through in a single pull request. Well, uh, we, we already do that, so we think. Uh, I, 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 yeah, that's the stable patch, stable branches and so on. But, uh, I've, I've seen cases where we, where we don't, and it sounds like the IOMAP stuff might be another example. So the IOMAP changes have no dependencies on any file system. That's a that's a nasty one. That's if we have changes that uh, where another subsystem depends on uh, stuff, for a prime example is often IO Uring because they do changes, we have infrastructure changes, they are affected completely separate tree. Uh, then we have a stable branch usually, and then Yen, Jens pulls it in, and then from then on forward he tests on that branch with the, these changes included. That's usually how we do it. The IOMAP change was particularly uh, was particularly bad in the bad to deal with easily because like they were completely separate patches from uh, from XFS, and that's exactly where the where something like FSNext would have helped because then like these two these two branches would have been to uh, would have come together. Yeah, been resolved. Okay, so I just really quickly right before I have to run to another meeting, the the other thing that I we didn't get to that I would still really love to tackle at some point is making uh, people who do cross file system changes lives easier, right, and making it easier for them to do API changes to you know, wide sweeping changes in a way that like is less painful and less like go run by these different file system communities and try and figure out how to integrate with them. Yeah, let's 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 not worry about testing right let's now. Let's move on to the next session. Yeah,